guys and welcome back to my channel. Sorry for being away for so long. Um, so much has been going on in my life right now. Some of those being getting married and moving into a new flat. So I haven't really had time to make videos but today I wanted to talk to you about the SJT and how I got a good enough score last year to get into North Central Deanery. So in this video I'm going to talk about um, how I prepared, the resources I used and the things to do on the day. So you might be sitting the exam either the first week of December and I think it's the first week of January, I'm not too sure, but that's usually when they are held. And I started preparing for it kind of end of September, beginning of October. So the first way that I started preparing for the SJT was talk to the F1s and F2s that had already sat the paper the year before. And I asked them about how they um, prepared, so the resources they used and the kind of scores that they got. And talking to them, I realised that those that used the least resources and prepared um, the least, when I mean the least, not those that did nothing, but those that were concise with what they did, um, got better scores than um, those students who had used lots of books and gone to lots of courses. So I used that as a basis. So the first advice I got was to um, use the official SJT paper as my basis. So I printed that off and I think it's really important to print it off rather than do it online because um, the paper itself, the exam itself is on paper. So by doing it um, by hand, you actually um, get used to the format and how to fill out the um, exam sheet. So that's what I did. And um, I timed myself um, the exact time I would need to do the same paper in an exam and I sat down um, in my room and I worked through all of the questions and then I went through and then I marked them. So marking them is all good but then it doesn't really cor correlate with the score that you would get in the official SJT because the score is out of 50 and you don't have to get full marks to get 50 out of 50. The way it works is that you're ranked um, against everybody else that's taken the paper in the year and um, if you do relatively better than everybody else um, even though you didn't get an extremely high score out of how many points you could have got you can still get a really good mark so um, you can still mark the paper and get a general score out of it but just to keep in mind that that won't be the score you'll get out of 50 on the day um, so I did the paper and I got like an okay score I can't remember what it was right now but then um, I gave a couple of weeks break I did the paper again and after I did the paper this time I um, spoke to a friend so a friend of mine we sat down on the phone and we chose about 10 to 15 questions at a time and we just go through them discuss them um, talk about why I got it wrong talk about why she got it wrong and just kind of create concepts and rules and ideas about why certain questions are right and why they're ranked in a certain order and that really helped because just discussing it out loud and talking about it and hearing other people's opinions and point of views really helped um, cement all the ideas into place so that's what we did um, around kind of October November and then um, just before I think like a week before the exam I went through the paper again just general skim this time and just um, thinking about the rules and the type of topics they go through, things like confidentiality, work ethics with colleagues, um, difficult patients, apologising, etc. And then just seeing the ideas of what kind of things were right and wrong. Um, and I made like a little list of, you know, if in this situation you need to do this, if there's a prescription error, these are the steps you need to follow. Not really strict rules, but just general ideas that you can refer back to in the exam. So um, I did that and the night before the exam I decided not to do anything. I wanted to keep calm and relax because I'm, I'm not going to be able to guess the, answer, the, uh, guess the questions that are going to come up, predict what's going to happen. Um, it's total luck on the day really. Um, sad to say that that is kind of what determines where you'll be for the rest of, um, you know, two years later. But yeah, so, um, so that's how I prepared um, for the exam, coming up to the exam. And some of the resources I used, so the most important thing I used was the official SJT paper. Um, and coming to books, 
I tried looking at some books, but I got very frustrated with them. The answers contradicted each other. I'm not saying that the answers in the official paper don't contradict. There are some that do, which is really frustrating as well. Um, but there were some books like um, the Oxford Handbooks version of the SJT, for example, um, and also past meds, like the very simple, very simplified, and even that contradicted each other. Um, so I was just very annoyed with them and I just left them because I knew that if I'd continue them more they were just going to confuse what I like what I already knew. Um, one book that I think was alright compared to the rest was the Situational Judgment Test by um, Omar Taha I think it was. That's the only one that I used but I was still very careful with it. I didn't want to rely on it too much but I just used it as like a question bank. Um, so books wise that's the only thing that I did. Courses, I didn't go to any paid courses. The only course that I went to was one that was held by F1s in, a, um, in King's College which was good because they didn't use their own questions and answers to discuss topics. They used the official papers questions and created discussion in the room. Um, so I was quite comfortable with that because I knew that I wasn't learning anything different. Because, as I said with the UK CAT and the BMAT, when you go to courses, that is that specific person's interpretation of the questions and the answers and the concepts. So, and then you pay for it as well. So, I was just, I just wanted to stay away from it, save my money, um, and not risk learning something that wasn't true. I mean, there are, like, good reviews about courses out there, but... I think that if you've done okay during medical school, you know your concepts of you know, medical ethics um, and just basic um, patient contact and how to deal with patients and difficult situations and you'll be fine. There's nothing new you would learn um, in like a course. Some of the like specific things they do teach you are, you know, FY1s are not allowed to prescribe cytotoxics, etc. But those are something that you could learn online anyway. You don't need to pay to go to a course to know that. Um, so that was that. So courses I only went so in summary courses I only went to one that wasn't paid and they did they went through the official paper books I was quite careful there was only that one book that I used so that's how I prepared so timing is a big issue I didn't think I would be the one that was affected because when I was preparing for it at home and timing myself with the same paper official paper um, I was fine, I had some time left over and I would go back to some questions um, but on the day I literally was so close to not finishing the paper. At first I was you know going through them like in good time, I was highlighting some you know some areas of it, I was circling questions to go back to, I did not go back to any of them. I just barely finished the paper and I was very upset that I wasn't able to apply judgement to some of the last questions that I did. But I did finish it in the end so my advice is take some sort of like a clock or, or like a watch that you can put on your desk and time yourself. Each question is weighted the same so spending longer on one and getting full marks and not even being able to finish the paper is not worth it. So if you feel like you've spent too much time on the question move on. I know it's really difficult you do want to do well but honestly move on. Um, so on the day um, you don't get to find out your SJT scores until you until March when you find out what deanery you've gotten into which is a bit annoying because you know you just want to know how well you've done and it's just that tension whilst you're preparing for finals um but yeah that's how it is um try not to discuss some questions when you come out um of the exam I know I'm very guilty to do this but if anything it makes you feel bad because people will say oh I put this first and put this second etc but actually you don't know that they might have done it wrong and your way is right because the SJT is so unpredictable um, that there is actually no point discussing it because you've done it and it's finished and I got quite a stress coming up to the SJT just because I wanted to be in a specific part of the country I wanted to be close to family which is why I wanted to be in London but I did you know it is important to remember that no matter what you're gonna you're going to like finish your finals, you're going to graduate and you're going to become a doctor. And no matter what part of the country you are, you are going to be a doctor. And that's what you went into medical school to do. So I know that the SJT seems like a very unfair way of placing people, um, you know, around the country for the next two years of your life. 
but it's important to remember that you're going to practice the profession that you've been studying for for four five or six years and um, so just keep calm enjoy it enjoy final year it goes really quickly and yeah so last few points is prepare early do the official paper discuss with um, your friends be careful with books and courses give yourself lots of like time yourself properly in the exam and once you finish forget about it enjoy the year and good luck to whatever you get in march